Hi guys, this is V Anu Parvati from second year EXCC department, and today I'm going to show you a project which is based on 3JS. First of all, let me tell you where you have been experienced or have seen the use of 3JS. I'm sure that everyone is familiar with the game Treasure Hunt, where you have uh, you could have observed that the objects which you see are 3D objects which you can move, rotate or even by clicking you can go inside that. Now that I've given you a rough idea, let me show you the result of today's project. So this is our project, its name is our solar system where you can observe all the 8 planets revolving around the sun. Now if I'm clicking onto a planet it gets zoomed in yes we can see some info it is same as the treasure hunt which we have discussed earlier now let's get into the behind the scene part and that is exactly what I mean is the code first of all we have imported all the modules and packages that are necessary for the program what does the three module consist of Basically, it consists of the modules related to scene, camera and renderer which we will see further. The other one module is orbit control. This module helps us to control what is visible on the screen via mouse. Then we have created a scene. Basically, what does it mean? To actually be able to display anything with 3.js, we need to remember these three things. There are scene, camera and renderer so that, so that we can render the scene with camera. After initializing the scene, we move on to the camera. Here we have used one of the type that is perspective camera and the attributes inside describes as follows. First attribute is the field of view. It means that the extent of scene that can be seen on the display at any moment. Here it is 75 degree. Second one is the aspect ratio. It is the width and height of the scene. We all have different window scenes, right? Hence, by this attribute, we can adjust according to your window size. The next two attributes tells the camera how much it can be zoomed in or out. Next, we have added scene to the camera and also set the position of the camera. Now, our next work is to render the scene. Here we have initialized the renderer and set the size. Now similar to concatenation of strings with the help of append child function we have linked it with the HTML document. Here while initializing renderer we have used webgl rendered which web graphic library in which it has a function called renderer. It will take scene and objects as parameters. Here the object in the scene will be displayed through the camera perspective. Below it is uh, a request animation frame which acts like a refresh it makes changes by 60 frames per second. Okay now till here we have been able to display the objects. Okay wait a minute are we missing some things? Oh god where are the objects so we have made all the arrangements to get object displayed but not added them so in order to make it more interesting let's add the objects so let's create a new object here we have started decided to go with the star field so in this line we have defined its geometry in this line we have decided which material it should be made off and uh, and then using mesh we have combined both geometry and material and added to the scene similarly for other objects like earth mercury etc now next is the setting of the light arrangement according to our solar system sun is the source of light and hence we place a point light at origin it also casts shadow of an object which blocks light and the ambient light spreads light in every direction. By giving a path for the planet to move, we provide an orbit. Okay, note it. We are not giving any imaginary orbits. By the same procedure of objects, we use 
we are going to give geometry and material to the lines of our orbits. Next step is to make the planets revolve around the sun in their own orbits. Note here, we want our objects to be on x, z axis. Hence, we use polar coordinates which are r cos theta, r sin theta. Similarly for all, uh, okay, see the sage statement defines the speed and position of the objects that are our planets for rotation and revolution. So next is the part called ray casting. What is exactly ray casting? So it is by using orbit control, we were able to control objects in the scene via mouse. So now by using ray casting, we will be able to follow objects with mouse control. Now here is what the ray casting function does. Uh, look at the statement console.log intersects. If you open the console on the web page, if we have not clicked on any object, it will show empty array. And when we click an object, let's say you clicked on Mercury. In console, it displays a particular number. It would be different for everyone. And using those numbers as cases, switch cases, we identify the objects. And next here are some conditional statements which allows us to follow the object by zooming and able to see it from every side. If the cases match, okay? If not, then it will update the controls of the mouse. I think the point is clear. Lastly, we call the function animate and here our JavaScript ends. Or we can say the code is finished. As for the HTML part, okay, we have one more code that is HTML part. It's quite simple. Here in the body, we have decided how should the text be displayed. So here we have decided to display inside a block and also added some features like color, size, style, etc. Then in the body, we have added some info on the object. So here we have completed our project. So this is our project. This is not the end. We can modify these projects in many ways in many innovative ideas or you can try something new stuff. I guarantee you that it's thrilling when it is done. Thank you guys for your patience. Hope you had a good learning. Have a nice day.